Hello, everybody, and welcome to Freedom Friday. And we're going to go into Suddenly Saturday, too. So we're going to get into all of it. But guess what today is? Today is the new, the new. Uh, because yesterday was July 25th, which is the day out of time. Uh, the day out of time is like the final uh time on the Mayan calendar and it's uh the new eve of the Mayan celebration of a year dawns on July 26th the day out of time is considered a day of sacred reflection and celebration it signifies the closing of the 13 moon calendar uh 13 and tw times 28 days period of time 364 days a day free of time. So yesterday was a day free of time. It was a day of reflecting and seeing what happened uh, in the past. And it, it was a good day to reflect. Yesterday was kind of hectic for me in my, my world, but it was a day to reflect. Every day you should use kind of days to reflect. That means today is like a fresh start, a new, a new year. Um, the Mayans were very, uh, go within type from what we understand, but we shift it and we have to go within. And yesterday I felt I had to go within, uh, portals, dream time, all kinds of things happening. Um, I did remember a part of a dream where a kite bird, it's, it's almost like, uh, almost like a seagull with a beautiful black V-tail, and they, they're around here a lot, and they're they're uh, beautiful birds, but I had a dream that one just kept circling like it was looking at the perception from above. I kept, I kept getting that message yesterday, look at the perception from above, look at different angles of the perception, uh, and then it's like we're starting to see, I'm starting to see different colors uh and things are disappearing soon they will not exist anymore i've been seeing that and we really have to feel this energy because we are going into something that we've never experienced before but we're going to experience it now and and you know it's a good thing because we have a lot of learning ahead of us um, I did do a channeled message the other day um, when I was doing these cards at the end, I have a channeled message. Well, it's not really an end. It's what came out in the end that I wrote down. We look to the outside world for our answers. Why? And I'm not going to answer that. I'm just going to leave it there as a question. Put in the comments, why? Why do we look outside for our answers? good question it's a good thought for a freedom friday okay now today is 7 26 2024 which is my birthday my soul day this is when my soul came into this avatar so that is a 23 which is a five and then we also have uh tomorrow we're gonna do two days because i'm gonna enjoy my birthday and i'm just gonna relax until soul surfing sunday so then uh 7 27 of 2024 is a 24 which is a six that's five and a six that's an 11 that's a master number that'll get us started i brought my coffee today coffee and cards with Bonnie d what could be better you get to hang out with your soul family now um we know a master number doubles in the energy it it we are going to go into so much. We have so much ahead of us that's going to look really chaotic. But things are disappearing as we know it. Soon things will be changed and we won't even remember. That's how evolution happens. Now, the Soul Helper Oracle that I did get was a number eight. Live in the world as a dreamer. Create a future paradise. See, this is the new. You know what? I'm going to read this one 
But then I have to read the practical magic next because that is what sources tell me. They're like, okay, read this one and then go to that one because my soul, my people have to create a future paradise. They have to live in the world as a dreamer, not a dummy, not somebody daydreaming, dazing, a dreamer. You dream of better things and you go out and you create it. The dreamers of the world are active creators of their own lives and futures. In close touch with their imagination and inventiveness, a powerful creative potential awaits each of us when we tap into these aspects of ourselves. With its perfectly balanced energy, each daydream has the potential for fulfillment. There is no ego and no relentless desire, just the pure feeling of dreaming itself. Dreamers are deeply connected with their own magic. Whether they are aware of it or not, when they dream, they let go of everything and enter a space where only magic exists. Keep your bold, brave, and beautiful dreams safe in your heart. They are worth more than all the riches of this world. Dream with every fiber of your being for the benefit of all living creatures. It is your mission, indeed, your responsibility to imagine the, in your dreams a world like a paradise. Dream a better world for us all. Such a world can ultimately only be created by those capable of imagining it. This is the ancient cosmic law of analogy, as within, so without. Only that is within us can be manifested in the outside world. Give your dreams and the images you see in your mind's eye even greater power by experiencing them more intensely so that they can guide you towards your potential. This card indicates that you are in a time in which dreams have more creative power than ever before. Your feelings and emotions are the magic that will make your dreams come true more quickly. Make use of their light and give in to your dreams. Dream a paradise for all living things. Visualize it every day and intensify these dreams with the helpers suggested. Your helpers for the next 21 days, the power animals, the otter, the herbal essence oil is sandalwood, the healing crystal is mulcate marble, and the number is an eight. <clears throat> Number eight tells you that now is the time for harmony, calm, and a place of retreat. You have been given the gift of a light that opens your mind and delivers the strength to create something that will last for all time. Should you want it to do so, number eight's energy field opens up eternity for you. It is renewal, paradise, spirituality, calm, mindfulness, and the completion of transformation. I love that because we are going through such an amazing transformation. Sometimes we have those hiccups, those little moments when it's not as good as it feels, but then we have those other moments that we are just riding high and we're just feeling amazing. Like the creator wanted us to. Now we did get a lot of master numbers with this and uh, the master number 11, the digits of a double number or master number 11, 22, 33, and et cetera are not usually added together, but instead are regarded as having twice the power of the particular number. Give yourself the time to allow the number of the card to resonate through your body, your light body. Visualize it in front of your heart and let it circle around your body. Don't try to control this, but instead simply observe where the number wants to go. Its position may bring important information. Yes, envision that 11. 11, 11, envision it and just bring it into your mind's eye and try to see where it wants to go. And that helps a lot sometimes to visualize that. Now, the practical magic was screaming at me and I know I had to read, live in the world as a dreamer. And Practical Magic is still giving me a hard time about it because uh, today is like the New Year's Eve of the Mayans. We got a number two, New Beginnings, Lady of Air. 
And I'm pretty sure we got her a few days ago because I was talking about her beautiful golden fire around her with her dress and her blue butterflies. And if you look, she's got the energy of the crescent moon above her. So she is tuning in to the power of the new beginning. <clears throat> Embrace the opportunity that are within your grasp. Leap into a new adventure and take adventure of the advantage of the energy of a fresh start. The energy of new beginnings is about moving forward, letting go of regrets and starting again. Free of preconceptions and limitations, this energy supports being who being who you are in this moment, not who you were in the past. The casting of judgment in order to become the person you want to be. This card invites you to embrace inspiration, attune yourself with the breath and life force of nature and focus the power of your mind. It's time to decide that new aspirations you want to dream into being. Whether it's new friendship, love, health, goals, projects, directions, a new career or life, and go after it. Whatever it is new be beginnings, hold the magic of a blank slate. So be open to all that is being offered to you at this time. When this card appears, it indicates that new opportunities surround you. Take advantage of this and set your intentions. What do you want to bring into being? What do you want to change or do over? Once you are clear on the specific intentions, consider whether you have the emotional and physical space in your life for these goals to take root and flourish. If you don't, make some. To accept something new, you have to let go of what is holding you back with self-doubt, old beliefs, preoccupation with the past and an unhealthy relationship, a disappointing job, an, un an upsettling situation to create room for it. This may be a little uncomfortable. The old and familiar can be hard to break away from. And a fresh start can sometimes be disguised as a painful ending. But you are ready to embrace change. So acknowledge any loss you feel. Then look for the silver lining and the opportunity for growth. And visualize how wonderful your life will be once you take action. Don't miss your chance for a new beginning because you are too busy or distracted to recognize it. And don't let it slip away through apathy and indecisions. Be prepared to put in the work to make it happen, then enjoy the rewards. So are you ready to embrace a new adventure? Do you have the courage to cast off the old so you can welcome the new? You don't have to wait until January 1st or a new month or even a Monday. You can choose to make a fresh start at any moment. You can choose a fresh start right now. Harness the potential and possibilities swirling around you. Sow the seeds of what you want to achieve. Bless them with your energy and intent and dedicate yourself to this process. New beginnings herald renewal and rediscovery. Grab them with both hands and celebrate with gratitude for the hope they bring. We have to celebrate with gratitude. You know, uh, the other day we got the card and it said that a, a lot of people don't show gratitude. They expect. Uh, don't do that. We don't want to do that. We can't expect anything. We got to show gratitude for what we have. I like how that card said that if you have a home, if you have a roof over your head, if you have food on your table, if you're somewhat healthy and you're safe, then you are probably richer than millions of people on this earth. So even though you may be living in like, say a little camper, drive one car and not have a lot of money, you have a safe place to come, it's warm, the electric's on, you have food in the refrigerator, and you're, you're okay, you're safe. A lot of people don't have that. So we have to really rethink about things. Are we being greedy and selfish? I mean, when we drive by and we look at somebody that is completely homeless and doesn't have anything, 
and then we go down the road a little bit and complain. Uh, we got to rethink about things. We got, we are going into the messenger oracle now. It, it's a different story time because uh, a lot of people don't feel like they belong. Well, we really didn't come from this dimension. And then sometimes you get there and you don't feel like you belong, but we know you have to know that you do belong because you were put there for a reason. Not your reason, not the neighbor's reason, not your friend's reason or your family's reason, but an unknown reason, our co our creator. And this cat is just beautiful. I mean, it's like the dragon cat. It is so cool. It's like, okay, I am half dragon with wings and I'm half cat. And I still belong. Because look at me. I'm extra special. See? Because I'm unique. I'm myself. You have a place. You have a purpose. You are special. Do not change who you are just so others might accept you. Do not dishonor your truths by allowing someone else to tell you who you must be. Change made just so you fit the expectations or social cri criteria of a clique or group does not honor you. You do not need to change in order to belong. You are a blessed child of Gaia and great spirit and, belo and belong simply because you are. Simply. Because you are. That is giving us a beautiful direction to think about. I've said it. I'm sure a lot of other people said it. I don't belong here. I don't feel like I belong here. Yeah. You were put here for a reason. You do belong here. You are part of it. You're part of the beautiful whole. So, the next card that we got was Heed Your Dreams. And I just got done saying about a bird. And, and it wasn't really a clear dream. It was just a bird circling. Like, look, and I kept hearing perception. Look around at different perceptions. Heed your dreams. Your dreams are a powerful tool for increasing self-awareness, for they contain within them the unfiltered truth. Whether it be a dream or a nightmare, they are the keys to understanding your inner self. Both your joys and your fears commune with Gaia and Great Spirit in the stillness of your slumber. Learn to read and interpret your dreams. Listen to what they tell you. Pay close attention to how they make you feel. Heed what they reveal and learn who you are and who you wish to be. If we listen to our dreams and our, our daily visions and things that come in, and if we listen to that, we'll get the message. Like me with the bird, it could have been, you know, you could have been, had a dream of, let's say an old friend giving you good advice, you know, because, and you remember the advice they gave you. Well, listen to it. If you look at it and look at it at a different perception, a couple different perceptions, and see if it fits you. That's all we can do with these guided messages that are coming in that we don't understand. Okay, we've got one more. And I like this card because this card, we are right now the calm in the storm. And I just love this because... It gives me goosebumps sometimes because we have been in a storm for like four years. It feels like, but it's been longer than that. We've been in a storm for a long time. I'm saying since 2012. And now we're in the calm of the storm. We're starting to actually see more things than we did before that were hiding behind the veil of illusion. There are times when life offers us nothing but chaos and turmoil. Wave upon wave knocks us down, sometimes before we can regain our feet. 
be still, take a moment to breathe, express your thoughts and feelings, and then do what you can to find a peaceful place of calm within you. If another is in need, offer them safe harbor, be a port in their storm. We have to remember that. Everybody has a different storm. We're all going through the storms, the, the turmoil, the chaos, the questioning. Just at everything. Everything is just coming to surface with us. And um, we have to know how to handle it. And these cards kind of do because... When I said about that dream, which I am seeing perception, look at different perceptions, shift your perception, the air guardian. And I don't think we've ever got her. If we did, we maybe got her once. Change the way you think and you will change your whole reality. The air guardian card represents the angels of the air element. Traditionally, air is all about thoughts thinking and everything that's happening in the mind. So these angels can help you overcome any thoughts that have come back to haunt you from the past and to see the world more clearly. They are guiding you to change the way you think about certain situations as this could be standing between you and greatness. When this card arises, it's an opportunity to learn about your way of thinking. You are being guided to recognize that not all you see is exactly the way you see it. Sometimes the mind can play games and sometimes our perceptions can be wrong. If you are being challenged or feel that there's a lack of clarity and direction in your life at the, at the moment, there's a good chance that the way you're thinking or what you're focusing on has a lot to do with that reality. You are being guided to open your eyes and your mind. Go beyond any limits you have set for yourself and recognize that the way you see the world is how you will experience the world. Opportunities are moving in your direction, but they will only open they will only open up for you if you are ready to do the internal work to support them. Yeah, uh, we have to work on ourselves. This is why I'm here. I did a lot of working on myself. I really went in to the deepest part of the dark night of the soul. And I, I took a while to get it out of my system and get myself balanced and yes I do get off balance once in a while we all do we have those moments and we just have to learn how to react to those moments the snake shed old skin we've been getting that a lot we don't want to hang on to the past the raw Cast off the old, reveal your true colors, talents, and gifts to the world. In many spiritual traditions, the snake offers powerful medicine. In tantric yoga, it symbolizes the kundalini, which is the powerful serpentine energy within that allows you to reach your highest spiral potential. When the sacred one saw a snake in nature or encountered one in a dream, they knew that there was transformation in the air. For me, the snake card not only represents the shedding of old skin, but moving beyond the limitations caused by carrying the venom of ne negative thought about others or the past. The energy of renewal is washing over you, your life at this time. If for some reason you feel that your true self hasn't been recognized or you've been misread by others, know this energy is now leaving you. As you've been working through your old stories and all the self-limiting beliefs that you've accumulated along the way, you've been peeling away a shield of the skin that has created limiting experiences. Your own personal commitment to growth has been recognized, and now the external world will begin to reflect all of the work that you've done within. 
If you feel someone you love has is misunderstood you recently, they will be able to see beyond that if you are willing to recognize your own challenges. This is a time for renewal, abundance, and connection. Let yourself be reborn and celebrate. Uh, I got goosebumps with that message because yes, I did take a lot of time in the dark night of the soul. I had some. I had three months by myself completely me and my two fur babies. And I did a lot of work through those days. I, I used those days as my tool to go within and see what was missing in my world. And when you look at the perception of your life in different angles, you will see different things that you never noticed about yourself that are beautiful and some that are ugly. We have to be our creator of our avatar. We have to protect our avatar because that is carrying our soul around right now. We are a soul in a body, not a body, but a soul. Okay. We got Shalin Master, be graceful in movement and action. Slow and steady, breathe and flow. Take a gentler approach. Shalin monks practiced Chan Buddhism and are masters of Kung Fu art and traditional Chinese medicine. Shalin medicine is about learning to adapt to a situation, to tap into the energy running through your body and preserve it in order to release it at the right moment. It also teaches subtly because when you are too forceful, you use too much energy and that may not be supportive of what you are working on. The Shaolin master, like a monk, has respect for all things. Depicted here holding a praying mantis, one of the forms of Shaolin martial arts, he is disciplined and guided by his art and will never use it to impress the foolish or to appear stronger than someone who is threatening him. You too are being invited to remain graceful in your movements, choices, and actions. You are being guided to flow like water, blow like air, and connect with your purest intentions. Don't feel you need to rush ahead. A, gentle, a gentler approach will be more fruitful and rewarding. Move with supplet and grace. Reach high, but also ask yourself how you can move with the flow of life rather than pushing against it. Do you have the capacity to refocus your gaze at this time? Can you slow down or take more time to soften and breathe as you move forward? All of this will be incredibly beneficial for what happens next. We cannot force things to happen. We have to go with the flow. Uh, that is a lot of people's problems. They're not going with the flow. Okay. We have now, uh, let's see what we got. It's getting dark over here. It's supposed to storm here. We've had storms in Florida every day on and off for thunder and lightning and no rain and then a sun shower and then it downpours and there's light. It's just crazy weather, crazy skies and crazy weather. Uh, we got mostly uh, <laughs> major arcana cards in this reading. And the first one we got, and none of them were reversed. So there was no blockages, which I am like, awesome. Is Soul Family working on our blockages? Because I know I've been working on my blockages. Every day, you've got to work on a new blockage that surfaces where you're triggered, and you've got to step back and look at what triggered you and what bothers you. Because we have to remember that everybody's comments, everybody's things are their opinions. None of us really know the 100% fact, unless maybe we designed it ourselves. So we have to really open up our minds and look with it with an eagle's perception and the father card the father card 
what could be better than the father card? And the father card is in the past position. So we are going to read the past. And the father, when he appears in the past position, will take you back to childhood. In the past position, his message will be influenced by the relationship that you had with your own parents and how it has shaped your perception of self and the world around you. While the father is often depicted as a very gender specific archetype, both father and mother play a defining role in how strong this aspect of self is within the individual. Was your father an approachable man who was actively present and interested in your life? Did he express an interest in the lives of his wife and children? Or was he a distant provider who went off to work and came home to, to a clean and ordered house where a hot dinner was waiting and children were seen and not heard? Was your father a loving man who hugged your... My father was the... Uh, yeah, that was my father, the uh, come home for a hot meal. He did love his children. We could approach him, but it was very, very minimal because he was working all the time. My father was a very hard worker. And he had several businesses, commercial fishing in Florida in the winter. Uh, he did major construction, pouring concrete, setting up mobile homes, selling mobile homes, selling property up in Pennsylvania. So our life was on the road all the time. Go to Florida in the winter, go to Pennsylvania in the summer, work, work. It wasn't a summer vacation in Pennsylvania. It was work. And then the winter time, it was us going to school and him working. Was your father a loving man who hugged you close, carried you on his shoulder and bandaged your knee when you fell down? Did he build sandcastles with toy dozers and share a cup of tea with Teddy? Or was he the stern, distant man who interacted little, offered praise only for accomplishments and meted out punishment when you disobeyed or broke the rules? How did your father interact with your mother? Did he treat her with respect? Was he supportive and loving, treating her as an equal and as a partner? Or was he the head of the household whom all obeyed? He, in turn, how did your mother respond to his treatment of her? My father was very good, my mother. Very good. The child of a strong, peaceful, caring father who treats all the aspects with fairness will grow to become an adult who treats those around them with the same fairness and respect and care. Yeah, that was my father. That's what we did learn. We did learn that people, they're, they're all different and you've got to accept them where you were, because my father had all kinds of people he interacted with. <clears throat> the child of a strong, peaceful, caring father who treats with fairness. Just as with the mother card, the father in the past position asks you to look at your relationship with your parents as it plays a defining role in shaping you. If your father was absent from your life, your mother may have served as both mother figure and father figure. There may have been no strong male role model at all, and this will in turn influence your relationship with both men and women. The attitude and behavior of the father within the family home, the manner in which he speaks about his work, treats his spouse, and expresses his political and religious views, is the child's first real idea of life outside the safety of the home. The father who comes home angry, complaining about a job that he hates, a boss that he despises, who speaks of God in one breath and con condemnation and punishment in another, is going to foster fear of the world outside the family home. Was your father fair and just in disciplining you? And was every mistake or perceived transgression punished? The mother lo love is unconditional, but the father's love is earned via accomplishment and achievement. Did you find yourself dreading report card time because you knew that a good report would bring a pat on the head and a bad report would bring punishment? The architect father, the architect father often sees love and respect as one and the same. And if his children do not live up to his standards or meet his expectations, his disappointment is obvious. 
if he cannot respect, he cannot love. Uh, yeah, that's not true because I know a lot of fathers that still love that really don't respect. Um, the father, when the father card appears in the past position represents an opportunity to look back at your relationships with your own father and determine how it affects your thoughts, feelings, behavior, and consequent, consequently your choices. Does it influence you in a positive and a beneficial way, or does it lead you to weight, weightier, heavier feelings and thoughts? It is your choice as an adult to decide how you allow this relationship to impact your life and behavior. Um, I think a father figure in a home is very important. And um, my father was in the home, but he was absent a lot. If we needed him, he was there, but he was absent a lot. And we got the Ace of Wands as a clarifier for the father, which is growth. Step into your power, invent, talk, and create whatever you say now will be received. You've crowned, you're crowned with success under the influence of this creative ace. A new project, work ideas, and travel plans take off. You're able to communicate well now to share your vision, your visions and persuade others to get on side. If you've been wondering if your plans will succeed, this card tells you yes. Listen to your intuition. <clears throat> will also strengthen your spiritual beliefs. An additional meaning is fer fertility and pregnancy and beginning a new journey or adventure. Yeah, today is a new day. Today is a new day. And I just went blank. Um, I did that last night. I took a gummy and my friends are like, oh, that's a, that's a pretty big CBD gummy. And I'm like, oh, took half of it. And I went into history to look for something and I get in history and I forgot what I was looking for. I was like, but it didn't really affect me as much as I guess they said. My husband was snoring real hard. He went to sleep. Gummies tend to help me sleep and I like them. So I'm good. Now, the next card we got was intuition. And that card growth just said, pay attention to your intuition. The other day we got this reversed. <clears throat> it's not reversed today. Uh, intuition is your sixth sense, the voice of your unconscious mind. Heed your intuition feelings. Intuitive skill born of practice. Pick the option that feels right. Strengthen your intuition. Tap in to your other senses. Make your best guess. Be both intuitive and rational. Watch and observe intuition or bad past experiences. Seek a second opinion. Always seek a second opinion always because your perception could be clouded you've got to get a couple of fresh perceptions and if the two fresh perceptions come up with a different perception in yours it sounds better go with it now the next card we got was intuition card and that is a 22 which is another master number uh, and this come in the present so we're going to read the present with the intuition card it takes both courage and practice to heed your intuition. We are often told to base our decision on rational thought and logic and to weigh each choice with care. Your decision-making process can, however, be enhanced by listening to your gut feeling. In fact, it is important to use both rational thought and reason and intuition and instinct. The intuition card, when it appears in the present, signifies the importance of heeding your intuition. It is better to appear foolish in the uh, short term than to make a mistake that could cost you far more in the long term. What do you do when you have half a dozen options before you and all have equal pros and cons? In the end, the only option available is to go with an intuitive decision and pick the one that feels right for you. If a situation or a person has you feeling tense, has your stomach in knots, has you feeling agitated, uncomfortable, or pressured, then back away. Trust your gut. Conversely, if someone has you feeling at ease and imbued with a sense of rightness, embrace the moment. Heed your feelings 
if you have a situation that needs resolving, a problem that needs stop, needs solving, somebody close to your heart that needs help. Uh, then it's time to stop worrying, calm yourself, calm your mind, extreme emotions such as anger and fear will only hamper your intuition abilities. Find a quiet place, go for a walk to clear your mind. The answer, the solution will come via intuitive means when you stop worrying over the problem. I know that we worry too much sometimes about things and we have to uh, really be careful with that because uh, my phone's going nuts over here. So the intuition card, uh, we got the nine of swords with that and that's anxiety. And when I was reading that card, I got this download. It said that stop second guessing yourself. And we got the anxiety. So someone is seeing things in their intuition and they're feeling that intuition, but they're having anxiety over it because they're saying, is it true or is it fake? Is it just me feeling this or is it really my gut telling me? You're questioning yourself too much. When you get that heavy feeling like in your throat and right here going down in your gut, then that is that feeling that you need to be aware. What ties you in knots at 3 a.m. may look small in the light of day. Try to keep perspective when negative thoughts get in the way. The Nine of Swords is the anxiety card of the tarot. It reveals trouble beneath the surface that is often expressed through dreams and nightmares. What's eating you up? You may be anxious due to pressure over work, relationship, or family issues or anxiety. Maybe a pattern for you as a worrier. On a physical level, it can show someone's not sleeping well due to stress or overthinking. Panic attacks, fear, Guilt, insomnia, nightmare, stress, mental overload. Yeah. Someone is is getting the intuition. They're getting that gut feeling. But they're having anxiety about it. They're second guessing themselves. And you don't want to sec second guess yourself. Not at all. Now, uh, we got the six of earth. And this is re responsibility and duty to family. Give love, care, and support. Lead by example. A time of sharing. Learning, learning about nature. Important matters need attention. Protect the animals, forests, and oceans. Help for the right reason. The Six of Earth reminds us of our responsibilities and duties to our family, especially the younger members. It asks us to be selfless and in service to those who are in need or dependent on us for love, care, and support. If you have children, it is your responsibility to provide them with a home that is safe and free from potential harm. It is your duty to provide for their physical and emotional needs, love and shelter them. As a parent, it is your responsibility to set a good example, to be a role model, to those around you. Educate them, teach them to be truthful, respectful, and to do unto others as they would have others do unto them. Teach them about life outside the home, of nature, of the world they dwell on, and their role as custodians and caretakers of this blue green planet. Teach by word and deed, lead by example. If you have no children, the sixth of earth comes to remind you that that it is your responsibility to both humanity and Gaia to become the best person you can be. Help where and when you can in your local community. Teach and share your knowledge whenever possible. Lead by example and be responsible for your words and deeds within a broader community. Look out 
into the world and understand that we share this planet and its resources. And each of us needs to do what we can to protect the animals, forests, and oceans. All of us have a duty of care to both family and the environment. While the sixth of earth represents responsibility and duty of care, overall it can also signify that there is a matter that needs to be taken care of in the present. If this is the case, do not forget, do not delay. Um, yeah, if you look at this card, he is at work. He is got the key, he's got the lock, he's got the chains, he's got his lunch, but he is working. He, he is taking responsibility of his family. He, her, it doesn't matter, it's not... We gotta overlook when I say he, it's because he looks like a he, but that doesn't mean it's not masculine feminine energy. Because with that, the clarifier was the Ten of Wands. And that's responsibility. <laughs> Can't make this up. Set some boundaries to reduce the stress. You may need to say no to certain people. This 10 is the overwhelmed card of the tarot. You have far too much to do and to think about. There may be pressure at work or on the home front. You are so absorbed in the detail, you can't see the bigger picture and discern what's essential. An additional meaning is that one person or situation is taking all your mental energy. So you have little time to focus on your own needs. We got another card couple days ago it was the it was an earth card she was juggling um yeah she and she was overburdened yeah it was the two of her it was it was the the girl juggling the cards we got her last time and that was uh balancing and work and play and that was she was overloaded too Yeah, forgive limitations and ask for help. So someone is overburdened right now. They have a lot of responsibilities. They're taking on the responsibilities. But there is more people there to help that, that, that need to help. Okay, now we got one more card because it flew out. And it's a 16, which is a 7. And it's destiny. Destiny, destiny. Your destiny is to become whole and co connected. Your destiny is to lead a life with meaning and purpose. Set inside, Step inside and explore your heart and mind. Discover your gifts and talents, a sense of purpose and confidence. Ancestral healing may be required. Break the chains. Remember your dreams. What are you are your strengths and weaknesses? Sometimes the most important destiny remains hidden. Your destiny may influence generations to come. Overcome the trials and obstacles. Uh, I'd say we have a lot of obstacles maybe in the way. Um, because this would be a future position of destiny. And you can have multiple destinies. I mean... You may have found your destiny vocation, but there might also be more to come. We are all connected, and the choices you make as you work to fulfill your destiny may influence others to do the same. It might also be your destiny to inspire others to seek their, their own. You might create other little destiny moments that need to happen so somebody else's life can shift and evolve. Everything we are and everything we do ripples outward and influences those around us. You might be here to make one seemingly obscure and random decision that brings about a change in the lives of your great, great grandchildren and inspire them to do something of importance to do the entire human race. When the destiny card appears in the future position, it signifies a need to remember that although you have a attained fulfillment in one area of your life you may still have other things to accomplish there is always something new to learn and experience 
that will add to your life. And sometimes the most important destiny to have is the one that does not reveal its influence until long after you have returned to the earth. That has the eagle's perception over that. The third eye is open. They've got a mask on, so they're blinded to everything else. And they got the feathers. They got the light, like a portal with the egg it's protecting. So, yeah, our destiny is going to be good. We've just got to get through this stuff. The King of Pentacles come up as a clarifier, and it says trust. Trust in your destiny. Trust in yourself. The king reveals a man who is ambitious, trustworthy, and protective. When he commits to a project or relationship, he is loyal to the last. He can be a powerful business owner or leader. He has a hands-on attitude as the you card. In readings, he represents generosity and love. What you gain, you share with the people who are important to you. Protect what is yours while helping those on their way up the ladder. Enjoy the reward that success brings. Okay, now that was that. That was the collective for all. Now we have our special message for our collective. And I thought this was a great way to end that part of the reading. Because we got a number 14, which is a fad. Drum roll, self, self, self on a shelf, like elf on a shelf, self. Establish a unique and individual identity. Yes, because you are unique. You have that one little magic spark that no one else has. And no one can copy because it's you. Be free of definitions and labels. You have unlimited potential. How has your past shaped you? Identity is fluid and changing. Who you are is for you to determine. Are you trying to fit with the wrong crowd? Know who you are, who you wish to become. A path of loving expansion. Let go of a herd mentality. Think for yourself. Uh, that's... Um, yeah. When the self appear card appears in a future position, it flows directly on from this, the question raised in the present. The two work hand in hand, one creating and manifesting in the next. Ask yourself, who do I wish to become? Will the choice, choices and decisions I make in the present change me for the better or worse in the future? Am I on a path of loving expansion or am I on a slippery descent into turmoil? Our identity and how we perceive ourselves is ever changing and evolving. We are our own masterwork. Let the love you have for yourself guide your brushstrokes, create a masterpiece. I love that. And I don't think we've ever heard that. And, you know, she has the white feathers around her. So that is the angel calling card. And okay, and the clarifier we got was a number 17 key the card, which is an eight infinity, which is the star card. An ethereal mermaid reaches for a shining star on the horizon of the ocean, a symbol of hope, healing, and renewal. The mermaid scales are purple, which symbolize intuition. The seaweed and water represent old emotions in the past, and their green colors signifies healing in the heart chakra. With the pentagram beside her signifies spiritual protection. You have worked through heartache and conflict, understood the lessons of these difficult experiences, and are now be beginning to feel hope again. The more you place your trust in the universe to protect you, the more the star guides you towards happier times. The card therefore reveals personal growth through healing past issues. You can be free from old patterns of relating and feeling more whole and fulfilled in the future. 
The star is also a card of creativity and offers great reassurance that you're on the right path. So if you have been conflicted, suffering, or doubting your abilities, the star in your reading is a sure sign that everything will be fine. Follow your heart and respect your inner knowing. Trust that the universe will bring you whatever you need. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about for the end of a card reading today on that part of it. Now, uh, usually the Divine Master only gives me one card. But this time she spit out two, so I kept it. We got sopped it. Cosmic power, unlimited potential, sacred mission initiated. We all have a mission. We all have a sacred mission from our creator. That's why we were put down here. Sophet is the ancient Egyptian name for Cyrus, one of their most important stars. Sophet is the feminine personification. She can, the translation is triangle or sharp one. She has been depicted in many forms, most often as a woman wearing a white crown, <clears throat> popped by a star, although sometimes she has an elongated head or headpiece, implying she's from another world. I seen one the other day that was on a show, and I'm still not getting over it. Uh, that was He wasn't dressed up as anything. That guy had an elongated neck, and I thought, Anunnaki. Cyrus is the brightest star in the sky and was of utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, one current new year was celebrated as the coming of Soptit. As during the last week of December, Cyrus can be found high in the sky between midnight and dawn. It's symbols of light and power. Also, My big knucklehead likes to bark when you go outside. Hey, where was I? <clears throat> okay, I'm going to read a little bit back. I might double read it a little bit, but I don't want to miss anything of this because this, this is a really good card. Cyrus is the brightest star in the sky and has the utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, our current new year was celebrated as the coming of Sophet. As during the last week of December, Cyrus can be found high in the sky between midnight and dawn. It's a symbol of light and power, but also a reminder that we have all come from the stars and thus have their power within us. The energy of wishing on a star and seeing that wish come true is within you now. This is a time to push forward with any projects or ideas that you feel called to carry out. You are a powerful being with unlimited potential. Don't let yourself be held back by anyone or anything. If you set your heart on something, there is no doubt that it will come to fruition because you are unlocking your star power. You are destined to shine brightly in this lifetime and all the experiences you are having at this time are in alignment with the sacred mission. There's an energy of positivity, abundance, and excitement around you now, and this will help you turn your visions into the reality you deserve to experience. I love that message for today because uh, we are all that and then some. We've had hot in mouth all the time and I wondered why it's this pill the doctor has me on it causes dry it's for um uh, muscle relaxer for at night when I go to sleep because I have some back issues but it makes dry mouth so I'm constantly always thirsty so that's why I pump a lot <laughs> Uh, that was great, guys. Cosmic power. This is my birthday, and I'm like with my soul family, and I'm feeling all the energy that's going to come into this reading. Mm, I love it. Mm. Okay, now we got the divine. Uh, thank you for the butterflies, guys. The energy is freaking awesome. I can feel it. Mm. The divine master. When you start feeling the energy from within, and you start. This, you know what? This screen is like a mirror. 
when your hair has those iggies up there, you can just brush it through and hopefully nobody pays attention. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm just being a little smarty pants today. I'm feeling pretty good because I'm 39 again, you know, so 39 and I've been 39 for a long time. No. Why not? Why not be 39? Okay, we got Lady Venus, light activation, call to action, power surge, and earth mission. Yeah, baby, we are on an earth mission. Remember that. Lady Venus is an advanced cosmic being of ecstatic light dedicated to helping us connect with divine wisdom. She is an interplanetary representative of divine love and a bringer of the higher consciousness that will support the ascension of planet Earth. The twin flame of Santa Camara, we just had him a few days ago too, or she, her. She is the queen of a cosmic race of light beings known as the Venetian. Yes, we did have it. Venetian's energy is an advanced cosmic energy similar to that of angels, and the Venetians consider themselves our starry ancestors. When called upon, they can help us embark upon a personal mission to make a difference on this earth. Lady Venus, although maybe a lesser known divine master, will be here, there to help anyone who wants to dedicate their life to making a difference. When her card pops out for you, your life has this potential. For hundreds and thousands of years, those on earth have prayed for a better way. You were born in response to those prayers. You were called to earth on a mission. Everything you have faced, overcome, and healed from is preparation for leaving a legacy. You are someone who will make a great change. This work can be overwhelming, though, so the universe won't place any expectations or pressure on you. But just by making small shifts, you are showing those around you what is possible if you feel you are constantly helping healing and guiding others that because this is a calling from deep within your soul lady venus is here now to give you a surge of power and inspiration to take this work further yeah i love that mm, look how powerful she looks all that fire coming out Wow, she, look, she's got, I never noticed this. This is pretty crazy. She's got a V. I don't know if you can see it. Kind of right there on her face. See it? I think you can see it when it's sideways like that. There, right there. It's got two little circly things and a V that goes down. The Lady Venus. It's a pretty cool card. Okay. <clears throat> We're getting it. We're getting it. We've got two at the gateway of light activation, too. It was really weird how they both come out because I only take one of those cards usually. I've seen my dog fly in. Um, I don't know if she can get in or not. Okay, she should be able to. All right. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh... You know, I said we had the Venetians a few days ago. Da, 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 da. No. We had... <laughs> Remember I said I took that gummy and forgot what I was doing in history and uh, everything. So when I pulled the cards, I was on the gummy. And I must have forgot because we did get the Venetian Galactic Council. Star being, guys, answer the call. Time to shine. Because that just told us about that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we've had that a few days ago, yeah. <laughs> nah, we have it today. That's even better yet, isn't it? The Venetians are advanced cosmic beings similar to angels who, become, who come from the planet Venus. They are our starry ancestors and are dedicated to helping us experience an embodied divine love. There are millions of them, and many of us will have them working with us as guides. If you feel drawn to this information or strongly connected to star stars or star people, there's a good chance that there are many extraterrestrial beings around you at this time, many of whom will be connected to the Venetian Galactic Council, governed by Lady Venus. Governed by Lady Venus. 
Oh, I love this. And Sonata Camara. And we had Sonata Camara uh, a while back, not too long ago. The Venetian Galactic Council is a divine board of directors who are responsible for recruiting light workers and leaders on Earth who have the potential to make a huge difference by following the call of their soul. When they come to us, it's an honor and an opportunity to be reminded of a connection that was active before we came into this incarnation. There's no set way of working with the Venetians, but will they will contact us in dreams or meditation to share information that will support us on our journey. They often send spiritual downloads and thought forms and understandings, dreams about flying or being in space, are other ways in which they will come through a, to us. You know, I have had so many dreams of flying. I've had dreams of flying into other dimensions, dreams of like, a, I call it a oh, scooter, air scooter. And uh, yeah, I, I've seen all kinds of stuff. Dreams are very uh, good. They're all parts of you. This is a call to action. You are being asked to step up and create the changes you want to see in the world. You have a reason for being here and you have the potential to inspire support and heal your corner of the world. Don't let this information scare you or overwhelm you for you are being prepared energetically to step into this role, the ideas you have been having recently are divine downloads, but you aren't being called to make dramatic changes to your life. Simply to move forward by step by step, the Venetian Galactic Council will reveal more information to support you. Be aware of downloads of information and spiritual signs, for they are confirmation that you are on the right. And that's a beautiful card. <laughs> I just looked down at the Cyrus and my ring turned green, emerald green. It does look blue sometimes when you hold it a different way, but right now it's emerald green. The emerald tablet teachings. Yeah. Cyrus star blessings. Yes, proceed, be seen, push through. Cyrus is the brightest star in the sky and was the utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, our current new year was celebrated as the coming of Sophit. Didn't you just read this? Okay. I don't think it's the, it's not the same one. Yeah. Why? Okay. Now I know I just read that and I swear it seems like this. Oh, that's why it seems like the same thing we read. It was soft fit. I knew we had read something similar to what I'm reading, but it is different. It just sounds like the same thing. And I'm like, did I just read this? Because this is all connected, everybody. I and mean, this, look, look at this. I literally did not know. And this was after number 17, cue the card, then eight, infinity. And then we had all of these. I wondered why. Two came out with these Venetians. We had the Venetian Galactic Council, Star Being Guides, Answering the Call and Time to Shine. Okay, that was the first one that came out. And then this one, Lady Venus, Light Activation, Call to Action, Power Surge, Earth Mission. And we had got Soft It, Cosmic Power, Unlimited Potential, Sacred Mission Initiated. We got him before her. Because these are the two of the same cards. And this is from this one. Venetian Galactic Council Star Being Guides Answer the Call Time to Shine. 
And then this one, Cyrus Star Blessings. Yes, proceed, be seen, push through. Wow, what a message, guys. Seriously. Uh, mm, 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 mm. That was like deja vu. I was reading it and thinking, didn't I just read this? They're going to think I'm nuts. I did not take a gummy today. I took it at night before bed. Okay, Cyrus is the brightest star in the sky and was of utmost importance to the ancient Egyptians. In fact, our current new year was celebrated as the coming of Sophet. The queen of Cyrus, as during the last week of December, Cyrus can be found high in the sky between midnight and dawn. The Cyrus star system is the home of a race of humanoid beings who most likely live in a dimension higher than our own. It's believed that these beings can be contacted through spiritual practice. Turning into them can enable us to receive high-frequency spiritual downloads. This card draws the bright light of Cyrus, the support of Cyrene star beings into our world. When it comes to us, it helps us find light in moments of darkness and uncertainty. And to continue on if you feel strongly connected to Cyrus and its star beings, it's likely that you are connected to them on a spiritual level. And if you take time to locate the star in the sky, you might even have a sense of coming home. The message that comes with this gateway is a giant yes. It brings the energy of wishing on a star and seeing that wish come true. This is a time for you to move forward with any projects or ideas that you have felt called to carry out. There is an energy of positivity, abundance, and excitement surrounding you at this time. Whatever dreams you've been revisiting recently aren't dreams, but premonitions. Know that whatever you're connecting with on the inside is soon to be something you'll be experiencing in physical. So think about what you desire instead of what you fear. See yourself celebrating as if your wildest dreams have come true. As you do so, you'll be creating the perfect energy for them to manifest in the world. Wow, this was a really, and it even mentioned Star, the Hope. That was the first one that we had. And then we had those. So now I know why we got the two cards that flew out from both decks that I usually only get one. So that was really interesting, guys. I'm going to have to re-look re at this just to see what's going on because, oh, crap. I'm going to read the Human Spirit Oracle and then I'm going to read the Golden Future. And uh, because we got a three. Now, this was definitely a divine message every message is divine let's just say that but the three initiate at the end towards the end is telling me that yeah this is a divine message and this is commune with nature does a bear poop in the woods let's go on a hike and find out get off the phone and computer screen and take some time to connect with the natural world AKA nature. When we are constantly connected to our devices, we lose that primal connection to the natural world. Mother nature has given us everything that we need, but as a society, we have turned to materialistic things and technology. When we get anxious or feel trapped, the first thing we say is, I need some air. When our worlds become too much, we can find peace and solace in nature. Take time today to breathe in some fresh air. Take in nature and sit with your old friend, Mother, Mother Nature. Take your shoes off. Let the soles of your feet touch the earth. Your worries will sink into the soil, and at least for the, the moment, you can breathe a little easier. Yeah, she's got her book, and she's got pine cones in her hair, kind of like two antennas. All her eyes are wide open, third eye. She's got a bird up here on her twigs. She's like leaves in her hair. Yeah. 
this was a great, great message. Because the last one we got was a 38 and 11. We started with an 11 and we ended with an 11. And this is, let me get this so I'm not so first. Let's let's start giving you a peek. Okay. This car is so friggin' cool. Free. I just lost my place in there being a smarty pants. Free energy. Be a powerhouse. Free energy. I've been saying we're gonna get free energy. I've seen it. Tesla, he's out there. Stuff's out there. Tesla made. Time travel, free energy. Now, in this one, they say 2032, we should have lighting, heating, and power will be provided by sunlight, wind, power, and other natural forms of energy held in powerful compact batteries. Uh, I think it's already here. It's just going to take maybe a couple of years to roll out. A few years after that, when the planet is at peace and there is worldwide international co-operation, Earth will earn the right to access new and totally free forms of ecolog ecological power. Wise master and techno techno technological advanced beings from other stars and planetary systems will download information about previous unimaginable forms of eco-energy and power to receptive scientists. These energy sources will include earth mag magneticism, pyramid power, and crystal power, as well as lighting, water, and elements, and plant energy. People will have retrieved many of their gifts by then and will be able to light up crystals by communicating with the elemental life force within them. In the golden future, freely available eco energy will power our needs in ways that are inconceivable to us now. The high priest taught, taught that very single thing on the planet was connected and respond, responded to particular vibrations. Allowing energy to flow, high vibration objects raise the frequency of everything around them. Now Toth is reminding you to honor the planet by using power carefully and by choosing ecological forms when, wherever possible. Bless and be grateful for all that you do use. Remember that universal forces constantly run through you. So plug in the clear, clean, eco, ecological supplies like trees, waterfalls, the sun, the moon, or stars, and bring this unlimited vitality through you. Stay grounded. Keep your chakras spinning around yourself with high-frequency objects and practice assessing your own free life force. Declutter your life, your home, your relationship, and your thoughts and emotions so that your personal chi can flow freely. By doing this, you are helping to prepare humanity for the ecological power of the golden future. Well, everybody, that was a beautiful reading, and I hope you guys have a magical day and a Freedom Friday and a Suddenly Saturday, and I will be back on soul surfing Sunday and you know I love everybody and may every step in your journey be magical and you know what just be you